Good evening. How's everybody this evening? Good. Try and get used to the, the weather here. <laughs> um, I'd like to welcome you to New Mexico, land of enchantment, where the sunsets are beautiful. Because like I tell everybody, if you want to see a beautiful sunset, come out to New Mexico and I'll show you a beautiful sunset. The children's home is located near the Navajo Reservation. The Navajo Re Reservation covers 27,000 square miles. It's the largest Native American reservation in the United States. The unemployment rate on the reservation is one of the highest in the United States. The poverty is one of the highest in the United States. As you can see up on the screen, the unemployment, the, the money that they get is not very high. So they work real hard at what they, what they have to have. The problems we have today on the reservation still is alcohol. As you can see up on the screen, is 40% of men and 20% of women are in an alcohol program somewhere. The other two problems we have is still is water source. They do have wells out on the reservation, but most of those wells that they have are c contaminated. So they have wells uh, in town uh, that are spread out on the reservation that they can go get the water from. This is how they get the waters. They have tanks that they have. They also have uh, trailers with big old uh, barrels on it that they can come to town to get the water. They're trying to get electricity out to some of these people out on the reservation by the solar panels that, that um, you can see up on the screen. And it really has uh, helped a lot of them to come up to where they are, they've, they've struggled all their life. They're used to uh, fighting for what they have. So they're used to their lifestyle. The children's home actually started as Navajo Mission on the reservation. There was two congregations that oversaw this mission. One was in Albuquerque, one was in Farmington. Both of those congregations are about two and a half hours away from this mission. There are two cinder block buildings there. One was a chapel, and the other one was just a storage shed where they kept clothes and stuff like that. Well, in the late 50s, they asked Gallup Church of Christ to take over this mission. Gallup agreed, and they took over this mission because they were a lot closer. Well, back then, the poverty was worse than what it is today. The kids were going hungry. They didn't have very much clothes. Well, they knew this mission was there, so they started dropping their children off at this mission. Hopefully, hopefully that somebody would take care of their kids. Well, when Gallup Church of Christ took over this mission, they saw the need of the children. So they turned this mission into what we have today. Manolito Navajo Children's Home. The chapel, they turned it into uh, the dining room, the living room, the kitchen area. The storage shed that they had, the storage building they had, they took all the clothes out, everything out of it, and they built three rooms. They put boys on one side, girls on the other side, and the house parents in the middle. Well, the gentleman that was running this children's home the children were coming left and right. And he did have a, another set of house parents, but there was a trailer out in the back. But he needed more help. So he contacted my dad. I grew up in a children's home. This is my foster parents, Vernie and Noreen Atchison. He contacted them and said, I need your help. Would you mind coming out and helping? Dad was a master plumber in the Dallas Fort Worth area. Mom was like a secretary at a health at a clinic. Well, dad agreed that he took off leave for about a year. They moved out to Gallup. But the problem was mom fell in love with the kids. So dad quit his job and they moved out there and they became full house parents. Well, the gentleman that was running the, the children's home back then his health was declining. So he stepped down as superintendent, and they asked my dad to become su the superintendent. 
My dad was superintendent for about 25 years. These are pictures from the children's home out on the reservation. They have food, they have clothes. You can see they also have a smile on their face. They have somebody that cares about them. This is me and my family. I'm the youngest one. <laughs> there were six of us that went, uh, came to the children's home. This is me again. I traveled with my dad off and on while he raised money for the children's home before I went to school. Mom said this picture right here, me and dad was in Texas and mom was doing, a, uh, dad was doing a presentation and some of the older ladies grew a liking to me. So they went and bought my first cowboy hat, my first pair of boots. <laughs> and I still wear them today. Not those boots. <laughs> my, my wife let me buy a pair of brand new boots. <laughs> this is me and my foster brother at the Tulsa Lectureship. Back then the lectureship was in a big old tent. All the uh, displays were in this big old tent. And this year mom said, um, me and my brother, it was raining, so she put us up on a table so we wouldn't get muddy and play in the mud because we were fixing to go to a dinner that evening. Well, at the dinner that evening, a gentleman was speaking, and he looked down at my dad and said, Mr. Atchison, I liked your live display that you brought this year. <laughs> the children's home out on the reservation was about on four or five acres. It wasn't very big. So dad started hunting for some property. And he found this property here. It's about 15 miles out of Gallup. Uh, up there at the top is I-40. Down at the bottom is O-66. So we're right in the middle. Well, dad talked to the gentleman about this property. And he said, yes, Mr. Atchison, I need to sell this property. But the problem is I need the money in about three months. Well, dad hit the road on three months, off and on, mom stayed home and took care of the kids. And on dad's last um, speak engagement, he stopped at this congregation and a gentleman was doing yard work. Well, dad stopped by and talked to him, told him what his need was, what he was doing. And the gentleman said, sorry, Mr. Atchison, the money we have saved up, we're gonna pave our parking lot. My dad said, that's okay. I just want to put some roofs over some kids' heads. Well, they exchanged information. Dad went back to where he was uh, staying at. A couple of hours later, the gentleman called my dad and said, would you mind coming back to the church? The elders would like to meet with you. So my dad went back down there, gave them the presentation, and when my dad left, he had the rest of the money to buy this property. And now the children's home sets on 27 and a half acres. It's amazing what God can do. All you have to do is pray and have faith. Now I'd like to welcome you to Manolito Navajo Children's Home. This is Ernestine. This is our, one of our older girls. This is Jim and Judy Christian and little Jimmy, superintendent of the children's home. This is Cottage One. Cottage one and cottage two was built in 1963, and we were able to move into both cottages in the summer of 64. This is uh, Antonio and Josephine. They have all girls in their cottage. This is cottage two. This is the Wilson cottage, Jennifer and Jim Wilson, and they have all boys in, in their cottage. We have 20 children uh, under our care right now. This is Cottage 3. Cottage 3 was built in 1966. And this is a relief cottage. This is John and Tina. They're our, our relief house parents. This means that the house parents on campus get a week off once a month. So the kids go to John and Tina's house and stay off. They get another week off, uh, three weeks off for vacation so they can put up but one vacation and one time off together, and that would give them two weeks. So John and Tina would have the opportunity to take care of the kids. That means the house parents do not have to leave 
their cottage. So it makes it a lot easier for uh, our house parents. This is Kathy and our family. This is Monica. We do the PR. When we first started working, we've been um, working for the children's home for about 12 years now. When we first started working, we were house parents. And then we became relief house parents and PR. So when we got our time off, we were doing PR work at the same time. But Mr. Christian wanted us out on the road more often, so he hired John and Tina to take over our relief. And so this past year was our first time to become full-time PR person. We have a shop on campus. We have a wood shop, an auto mechanic shop. We have a gentleman that comes in every day and works for us. He does all of our maintenance for us on our cottages and on our vehicles. This little building up in front has our lawn mowers, uh, yard, yard work equipment. It's like I tell people, um, we do mow, but we mow our weeds. Because <laughs> I promise you, if we don't mow them, our, they get pretty high. So it does get busy. The long building back in the back, we have a pantry on campus and a walk-in freezer. When Kathy and I took over PR work, we got our, tried to get our heads together, trying to figure out what we needed to do to help. What and how can we do our job? We started looking around, walking around, talking to the house parents, trying to figure out what we can do. We walked in the pantry, and there was hardly any food on the shelves. As you can see there on the bottom, the shelves were pretty much empty. So we had to actually go to town and buy groceries. That means they took away from our funds. Well, Kathy and I started to get together and we started a food drive. Why don't we get the churches involved? The ones that support the home, the individuals that help the home. Why don't we get them involved? And we have. Since we started this, it has exploded. We have more food than we can handle, and that's wonderful. God has watched over us, and he has blessed us. We're not complaining. We have churches that give us meat when we need it. All, all Kathy has to do is to pick up the phone and say, we need some meat, and somebody will bring us meat. We have a clothing room on campus. We have a lot of people that donate clothes to the children's home. We have a lady that comes in and she sorts through the clothes and puts them where they need to go. This is Kathy um, washing some of the clothes that um, some of the kids need. This is JJ. This is Monica's little brother. Up there at the top, you can see him and I walking from the office. This was his first day at the children's home when his mom checked him in. In my hand is a little tiny bag. And in that bag is what you see up on the screen. That's all he had. So this what the clothing room is for, is we can take these kids that don't have much, we can take them over there and give them the clothes that they need. We had a family that came to us of, uh, of four. A mom checked her kids in. She brought a trash bag and half of the trash bag was their clothes. So we were able to take the kids over there to the clothing room and give them the clothes that they need until we were able to go to town to get them some more clothes. We've been blessed over the years. This right here is Kathy and I's uh, pickup and trailer that was donated to the children's home from an estate. Prior to that, we were living at a hotel room and uh, eating out. So this gentleman came and talked to us of what we needed, and we told him we'd like to have a pickup in the trailer that would help us with the expenses of the children's home. And he went back. His family members were involved in uh, Native American stuff, and he won they wanted their money to go to some a Native American institution somewhere. So he came out and gave a uh, pickup in the trailer. So it's really helped us out uh, at this time. 
We've been blessed with washer and dryers. Uh, we need them. When you're washing clothes for 10 boys or 10 girls, you definitely need them. You run them pretty, pretty good all day long. So, and we are still uh, in need uh, for some more washer and dryers as well. We've been blessed with uh, new water heaters. We have up there at the top is uh, our heater. We need to raise money, try to raise uh, to get new heaters for our cottages because these heaters are um, getting pretty much out of date. So we're having problems uh, finding parts for them. We have a Christian school on campus. We have two teachers at our Christian school. We have um, second grade all the way to 12th grade. We have a gymnasium on campus. Our kids, all of our kids, even the kids that go to the school, they all bring lunches, even our kids on campus, even though the school is from here to the parking lot from their cottage, they all bring lunches to school so everybody can be together. After lunch, we have chapel. Mr. Christian will lead singing, and then he'll do a short devotional. Since we have started this at our Christian school, we've had about three or four families that have started attending our church in Gallup. We have a banquet every year. Our kids get to go in and and mess up the gym for about a week, uh, but it's beautiful after they get finished with it. it. It's exciting to see them get involved with different things. We have kids that come from town to our Christian school. We have a, our daughter-in-law drives the bus, and she goes, everybody meets at the church building, and she picks them up and brings them to our Christian school, and then she takes them home in, in the afternoon Mr. Jim and uh, Miss Judy own a martial arts studio in town, a skating ring also. And most of all of our kids on campus take martial arts. They take it three times a week. It gets them away from the PlayStation and away from the TV and gets them some exercise. So this pictures up here are just a couple of weeks ago, they had their belt testing. And so they, um, they got their, all their new promotions on their belts. We have kids that come from broken homes, abused homes, alcoholic homes. I came from a home that was alcoholic. My dad and mom were alcoholics. I didn't know them, but they were alcoholics. So we have kids that come from that. These boys right here, we had a church that burnt down on the reservation. They were able to raise the funds to build a new church. So our older boys were able to go out and help build this church. It took them, I think it took them about a year to rebuild this church. But the boys were able to learn carpentry, electrical, plumbing. It gave them uh, experience, something that they probably would never have. And one of our boys, uh, works in construction now, but he loves it. So it was an opportunity to help these kids um, change their lives or better their lives as well. Our work's never done. When you're taking care of eight boys or 10 girls or whatever the case may be, we're always busy. You know, when one gets sick, you know, the whole batch is going to be sick. So you're always busy. This is our board members that run the children's home. We get busy in the summertime. We have a lot of youth groups that come out and help during the summertime with different projects that need to be done that we can't do during the wintertime. So we keep everybody pretty busy. This right here was a, a playground that was donated to the children's home. This congregation came out and put it together for the kids. And now we can't get the kids off of them. But that's a good thing. A change, change is good for 
for the kids. My mother and my father left me, but the Lord took me in and made me his. How true is that statement? We're all God's children, but there are some that need God more than we do. Monica, when we got her, it was right before her second birthday. Her mom came and brought her in. The superintendent always asked the family, what's your need? How can we help you? She turned around and looked at the superintendent and said, she's in my way. Can you look at your kids or your grandkids and say that they're in your way? Monica's been with us, uh, what is she, 10? She's 10 now. So she, we're, we're mom and dad. She has a family. She has a mom that comes and checks her and JJ out once a month to see them. But she calls us mom and dad. We're her mom and dad. We go to LTC every year. It's wonderful to see these kids grow in a spiritual sense because they come from a broken home. They don't understand about Christ. The Navajo, we have two kinds of, of um, Native American at our children's home. We have the Navajo that we have, and then there's a small reservation south of Gallup, a Zuni. So we have two, we have Zuni and Navajo that are in the children's home. The Native American, the Navajo culture is very strong. So it's hard to convince them about Christ. So it's nice to see these kids involved in LTC to try to change their spiritual life. Ever since Monica was a baby, when we got her, I prayed with her every night. I go tuck her in. Now that she's older, she comes and gets me, Dad, time for bed. And I'll go in there and I'll kneel beside her bed and pray with her. And some nights I'll say, Monica, okay, tonight you pray. And she'll say her prayer. Her prayer not, might not be perfect, but God knows what she's saying. Just being an example for these kids is a spiritual lifting thing for me. Get these boys up singing night, up in front, teach them how to sing is exciting. All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and teaching them. There's that key word, teaching them. It doesn't say teach to the elderly. It doesn't say teach to the young married couple. It says teaching them. Who are them? We are them. Your community is them. The children's home, the kids are them. Teaching them that hopefully they can be part of our Christian family. God has a plan. He has a plan for all of us. We don't know what it is, but he has a plan. Monica came home one day and she wanted to make cookies. Kathy got this recipe out and helped her to make cookies, teaching her how to make cookies. The bad thing about it was I had to help her eat them. <laughs> Just teaching these kids something that they probably would never get to, to do is exciting. We love our job. And I'll be honest, it gets stressful, but we love our job. Like Kathy and I always say, it's not about us. It's about these kids. Getting these kids to have fun, to be a kid. AJ, this past year was the first time to play football. Had the opportunity to play football. And he's pretty good. They had scouts out there looking at him this year. He, he lettered his first year. 
How exciting can that be? His coach has even taken him, uh, this couple of weeks ago, his coach even took him to different colleges to figure out what college he wants to play football in. How exciting is that? To see these kids come from a broken home to be able to change their lives. We do different things to raise money for the children's home. We do a 5K uh, in, a, in town, get the community out to help. We do a championship bull riding every year. We, do, uh, we have a gentleman that puts us on for the children's home. We do the parking and we do the concession stand. We get the money from the two items. This past year, we raised over $17,000. That was just, that was after we paid all of our bills. So that was our biggest fundraising of this, of the year. This is Katie. She graduated this past year. She's, she's going to college. She still lives at the children's home, but she's going to college in town, uh, a branch, a UNM branch in Gallup, and she wanted to become a nurse. So it's exciting to see these kids change their lives. She has three, four other siblings, five other siblings, but there's like four of them that are in the children's home as well. And she wants a better life for them as well. We have a new project that we need help with. This is our layout of the children's home. What we want to do is to expand. We want to build new cottages. We want to take this circle and we want to put it right there. We want to build new cottages. The reason is, is there's so many kids out there that need help. Mr. Christian was talking to a social worker. So social workers come out and check on the kids make sure they're taken care of if there's anything that they need. She, he was talking to her, and he asked, if I build a cottage, can you bring me kids? She said, yes, I can. Well, if I build three cottages, can you bring me kids? She looked at him and said, Mr. Christian, I have 100 kids right now that I have nowhere to put. So that's the reason we want to expand to help more kids. This is some of the ways that you can help. Kathy and I have a display out in the foyer. We'd love for you to come by and pick up some of these uh, brochures that we have. We'd love to meet you if we haven't met you. And if you have any questions, we'd love to answer them. We're not supported by the state of any means. We do not get any money from the state. We get uh, money from individuals and congregations as yourself, and we do appreciate your help, your help that you support the home. We, def we desperately need it. This is my mom and dad. I put this picture up here because what I do, I do for them. Because if it wasn't for them, I wouldn't be here today. My dad was my mentor, my mom was our mom. I looked up to her. I looked up to dad, but you know how mom and sons get real close. She was a lot to me. She passed away about two years ago. She was 99 years old. So I put this up here and dedicate what I do for them. I just want to say thank you for giving me the opportunity to be here this evening. I appreciate it very much. Let's change the subject for just a minute. What is your life like? Look at your life. What's it like? As a matter of fact, do me a favor. Look at your hand for a minute. Look at your hand. Has any of y'all got a cut, paper cut, or a splinter in your hand? It hurts, doesn't it? 
I know it drives me crazy with the paper cut because it just seems like it don't heal properly. What if you had this in your hand? There was a young man that walked upon this earth that gave his life for us. They crucified him. They put a spear up his ribs. They put the thorns on his head. They whipped him. They beat him. They cursed him. I couldn't do that. Could you? When he was born, he knew where that path was going. How many streets, how many ways is there to get to this church building? How many ways can you think of to get to this church building? There's only one way. Jesus knew that way. But the good thing about it, it doesn't matter how far you go off on the path, it will lead you back to the right way. When was the last time you talked to your neighbors about Christ? When was the last time you talked to the lady at the checkout stand at Walmart? Or getting your... Uh, fast food, the lady that hands you the, your food. When was the last time you said, do you know Christ? I'm guilty. I'm just as bad as everybody else. But when was the last time that we spread God's word? He did that every day. Didn't hesitate at all. We all know this memory verse by heart. Gave his only son. Why? Because he loved us. What are we going to give back? Think about that this week. How strong is your faith? Are we ashamed? Are we ashamed to say, I'm a Christian? Do you know Christ? He wasn't. He wasn't at all. He crucif they crucified him because he said, I know Christ. I know my Father. How strong is our faith? But for any reason that you need to be baptized or you need the prayers of this congregation, for any reason, would you mind coming up while we stand and sing? Lord, let your light, light of your faith, 